Welcome to The Standard. From Vancouver, I'm Peter Klein. Tonight, Iraq has been out of the news for some time, but that doesn't mean the conflict's over. A journalist who's just returned from Baghdad will be here to update us. Welcome back. According to George W. Bush, the mission in Iraq was accomplished back in 2003. But as we all know, the president's declaration was a bit premature. This said, Iraq is mostly out of the news now. So how bad is the situation there? Is the country finally coming out of its dark chapter of war and sectarian violence? Adani Ditmars is a co-editor of the New Internationalist magazine. She recently returned to Iraq for the first time in seven years to report on the conditions of the country, and she joins us in studio. Welcome. Thank you. So you were there in 2003, in the summer and fall of 2003. Uh, I was there at the same time. Um, the country has changed dramatically. It's a, it seems like it's, a, it's gone through several different permutations since then. How, in your impression, how is it different now than the last time you were there? Well, I think it's important to look at the context because I've been reporting from Iraq since 1997, so I was able to see it at so different stages. You've seen a lot of changes. But even since 2003, since that last time I was there, there have been a lot of dramatic changes, and mainly for the worse, unfortunately. Um, for uh, the long suffering Iraqi population, things have gotten worse in terms of security, um, infrastructure, health care. I mean, there's some very sobering statistics in our fact spread. 70% um, of Iraqis don't have access to potable water. Um, there's about the same percentage unemployed. 43% uh, of Iraqis live in abject poverty. And this is after $53 billion has been spent in right. aid, right. which has gone mainly to um, foreign military contractors and corrupt officials. So there's, there's a humanitarian disaster going on in Iraq at the moment. And if Iraq does get into the mainstream media, it's usually because of a dramatic bombing right. or um, reporting on this bizarre sort of pseudo-democracy that's, that's at, right. <laughs> at play. Well, there is, uh, you, you even referenced this in your, in your piece, that there's sort of a pining by some people for Saddam, for a time when either Saddam or at least a strong leader, Nouri al-Maliki has, has, has used that to say, look, I don't want to cede power to the cabinet this country needs a strong leader, and I want to be that strong leader. Well, what people are nostalgic for is not the police state, but uh, just for a basic standard of living uh, and security. Uh, you know, I interviewed a, a man in Mansoor in the market, and he was in his late 60s. And interestingly enough, in the, in the wake of the invasion, there was this nostalgia for the 1950s and the monarchy, the British-backed mm. monarchy. This time, I noticed there was more of a nostalgia for the period of Abdul Karim Qasim, mm. who was deposed by the CIA. Yeah, flirted with the communists, the Russians, and was uh, deposed in this 1963 uh, CIA-backed Ba'athist coup. Um, so I talked to this gentleman in his late 60s, and he said, "Oh, I remember what it was like in those days with Qasim." I said, "What was it like?" And he said, "Well, there were jobs, and there was security." And you know that's not a lot to ask for, but in Iraq today, those things remain elusive. Yeah. Um, people remember when Iraq was an educated, secular, developed country, when it had the best health care and public education and highest status of women in the Arab world. My sense coming back this time was that Iraq had truly been broken, colonized, destroyed on so many levels. And it was really heart-wrenching because, you know, just the physical landscape of Baghdad, I mean, there are these tea walls everywhere, which I talk about in the section on culture, because actually Iraqi artists have sort of <laughs> embraced the tea right, wall as a, a new of, canvas. Uh, yeah. um, but it was so shocking for me to see all these concrete barriers and tea walls everywhere. It reminded me of, of the walls in Palestine. And, you know, in a way, the T-walls sort of become the visual symbol for the new Iraq because it walls off rich from poor, the green zone from the, the rest of, of Baghdad and, and neighborhoods uh, along very strict sectarian lines. So but, I really... But you do give the sense that it's, it's so much worse, although I, I've, heard, I've also heard, heard, and I haven't been back in a few years, mm -hmm. but, but 
you know, I, I interviewed Muqtada al-Sadr, who vowed that he was going to have a, a, an insurgency, and he did. He had two insurgencies. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time where you really couldn't even, as a Westerner, mm -hmm. leave the green zone without very, very heavy security. It's 2006, 2007, right. at the height of the Saharian Wars. And it seems like wars. it's yeah. better than better that than then. now. Yeah, you, if you're talking about 2003 right. and now, there's a, right. there's a very marked So it's sort of gone difference. through this sort of ebb and... Well, it's a bit safer than it was at the height of the sectarian wars in 2006 and 2007. Um, so are people at least breathing a sigh of relief that at least, you know, deaths, I mean, it's not like death squads are going to hospitals the way they used to, right? No, but what's replaced, well, the militias are still there, but I mean, what is, what is dividing the neighborhoods is really fear now. I mean, why do you think, you know, a fifth of the population are either refugees or internally displaced? People are too afraid to go back to their neighborhoods. Once you've been chased out by the Medi militia, right. you're not going to be in a hurry to go back. There's a lot of people in Syria and, and other places as refugees. There's a huge humanitarian like catastrophe a, isn't there. Isn't more than a million people are well, sort of outside of the Well, altogether, it's about a fifth of the population that are either internally displaced or refugees. And um, I think there's, um, is, it, is it two million uh, internally displaced and three million refugees? I'm not sure it's actually yeah. <laughs> in my magazine. We can check. <laughs> But I know that it's around a fifth of the population that are either internally displaced or refugees. So uh, that's, that's quite significant. And why, why are the refugees not going back, you have to ask, if it's, if it's safe and if there's jobs right. and if there's potable water and if Iraq has become this kind of democratic Disneyland, why are they not returning? Right. Well, in 2007, I think it was 2007 or 2008, I did a story on Anatomia where that was a surge, right? That, the, the whole idea was to show great American military presence, coalition mm -hmm. military presence, primarily mm -hmm. American. Um, what is it like now when you walk down the street? Do you really, is there a real sense that the, that the U.S. military kind of runs things, or have they, the idea was to sort of back off and let the Iraqis sort of take, at least be well, the front guys? First of all, Peter, I didn't walk down the street. Right. Um, too, too I had to stay for the first time ever in this kind of armed compound yeah. for, for journos, which was bizarre. And in the green zone? No, it wasn't in the green zone. No, it was outside of the green zone, but it was it was a fortress, you yeah. know. And I really resented that I had to do that, but all the all my favorite Iraqi hotels had been blown up mm -hmm. recently. And as a woman, um, I was always very aware of what was going on in Iraq with the status of women. And I've reported from uh, many places in the world where um, until recently it was actually... Um, much more dangerous to, to be a woman than it was in, in Iraq. Mm -hmm. And this time there was very, very limited mobility. Um, the, the public realm for women is but sort limited of finished. limited mobility because of, because of sectarian strife? Or just the whole uh, status, the whole decline in the status of women has been dramatic, Peter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I um, had to go everywhere accompanied. Um, I remember just going to a, a kebab restaurant with a friend, and I was extremely uncomfortable. I was the only woman there. I was hijabed, mm -hmm. you know, and covered, but I was just sort of stared at unrelentingly the whole time mm. I was eating. It was very uncomfortable. Yeah. There, were, there were sort of private enclaves, uh, little secular islands, and, and, and this is sort of the hopeful part of my reporting on my journey back after seven years is that I, um, I met these young actors who were very connected to the Baghdad Fine Arts College, and they were doing a play about Mudafar al-Nawab, who was a famous Iraqi communist poet um, who was uh, expelled, actually, uh, in 63, right after that coup that brought the Ba'athists to power, and now lives in Syria, and has become the sort of symbol of resistance for a lot of young people, because he was against Saddam, and he's against American occupation, and he's about, you know, standing up for right, your, your civil rights and resisting. So this play, you know, to, to get a sense of the mood in Baghdad, you were asking me about, I'll, I'll tell you this one story. You know, you're, you're, we had to drive for about an hour. Uh, it used to take maybe 15 minutes, the same drive, to reach this, this um, villa on the Tigris that had been converted into a theater. You know, so you're driving through this toxic traffic. The, the traffic um, is a big issue in, in Baghdad now. I mean, it takes hours to get from A right. to B because of all the security checkpoints that Maliki installed uh, in his sort of you know, law and order campaign. So, you know, basically, which translates as, you know, Maliki um, getting rid of the militias but having his own private army, right? Well, let, so, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me stop you there for a moment because yeah. we have to take a quick break. But continue that, and, then, and afterwards we'll also talk about sure. how things have changed or haven't, haven't changed under Obama's president. More with Hadani Ditmars after this short break. <laughs> 